Hello, good morning and a very warm welcome to Friday's Festival 5. Festival 5, the five big talking points on the final day at the Cheltenham Festival, where, of course, the big race today is the Blue Ribboned. It is the... Gold Cup, the Well Child Cheltenham Gold Cup, due off at 3.05. What a day yesterday, particularly for Ireland. Just sneaked in one winner for Great Britain. But the tables may turn today, 1.20 the first. The Triumph Hurdler, really strong British challenge in that. And, of course, the big race then at 3.05. And we close with the getting out stakes, the tricky Martin Pipe Conditional Jockeys Handicap Hurdle. And joining us once again for the next 15 minutes, we have one of the most successful festival jockeys of all time, Barry Geraghty, and also Declan Ricks. Both of the boys, no doubt, glowing in the uh, this success for Ireland. I mean, what a week for you guys. You couldn't have imagined it, Barry. No, it's been going brilliantly. And some brilliant results yesterday. Small trainers, um, Flooring Porter. Yeah, and it's, been, it's just been amazing. Rachel as well on fire too. Yeah, and you said at the beginning of the week, Declan, that it was going to be Ireland all the way for the press Cup. I think you couldn't have got that more right. Yeah, true enough. But uh, although I don't think it was a particularly brave shout at the time, was it? But look, it's as Barry touched on there, it's been brilliant to see kind of smaller trainers in Ireland share success with the likes of Willie Mullins, um, those at Culture House and also Henry de Bromit. So it's been a great week all around for the Irish. As it stands at the moment, it is 17 to Ireland, four to Great Britain, five to Rachel Blackmore, and we'll speak about her shortly. But let's kick off with our first talking point. And the question here is the triumph, Zanayir or Tritonic? So, of course, we're Ireland v GB. Tritonic won the Adnis last time out in impressive fashion. It's 10 years, though, since the last triumph winner ran in that race. However, 2010, 2011, both won won that Kempton race and then went on for Triumph Glory. So Barry, Zanayir blew us away when he stepped onto the hurdling stage in the autumn. Has Tritonic given him something to worry about? I think he has. Zanahir is very good. I've written him all his work all season and he works really well. His form is rock solid. It's been on soft ground and I think he will appreciate the better ground. He's a first time tongue to as well. He doesn't need that desperately, but I suppose it's an insurance policy really. Um, but Tritonic was really impressive in Kempton. I thought he jumped better as the race progressed. He's highly rated on the flat. He stayed well on the flat. I think they're two above average juveniles. Yeah, I think this is a real quality race, Declan. It really is. And we can't rule out some of the others. But of that duo, who wins the argument? Well, look, I think as the prices suggest, Zanny here is probably is the most likely winner. But I think at the price, I'd probably I'd chance the Alan King horse, uh, Tritonic. Um, I was very impressed with what he did at Ascot when he wasn't fit. And then he took a big step forward at um, at Kempton last time out. Um, some people have crabbed his jumping. It's probably he probably doesn't jump as well as Zanny here, but there's not a lot of jumping in the final third of the of the Triumph Hurdle, and that might help him. The way he demolished the last, the second last, and still managed to hit the ground running after it, I thought was very impressive. So uh, it's a hugely, hugely exciting race. But just at the prices, I'll I'll chance an English horse. Oh, uh -huh. there you go. So we could claw one back potentially. But of course, we would be foolish to leave Quilixios out of the equation for Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Blackmore, given the week they're having. And Barry, we shouldn't discount this horse, or should we? No, it definitely has a big chance. I've written him work as well, and he does work well. He is a good horse. He has good form. He probably lacked a little bit of recent match practice last time when he won a Leperson, so he will improve for that. But on his homework, I just have Zanny here slightly ahead. Very briefly, you've, you've ridden them both. Who's best? I'd go Zana here, definitely. Zana here, then. There you go. That's the triumph sorted out. I've gone for Tritonic. I'm hoping that Team GB can claw a winner back. Let's talk, though, about the Blue Ribbon, the Gold Cup. And is it an Al Boom hat trick? Golden Miller won five. Cottage Rake won three. Arkel won three. Best Mate three. Corto Star two. And now Al Boom Photo has won the last two. All those aforementioned winners had the red carpet rolled out for them. Are we doing this lad a disservice, Barry? Yeah, I don't think he's, he's had the opportunity to advertise himself at his best. And even his Gold Cup win last year, with the slow pace, I don't think it suited him. Paul Tennant had to ride him forward and aggressively. Um, he demolished the field. I was second to him the previous year on Annabelle Fly. He demolished that field. He was a head and shoulders winner. I think with a stronger pace today, 
he's definitely the one to beat and I think he will be hard to beat um, Champ I thought showed a great level of form in Newbridge up and back the two mile and Scurrell was advertising that well in the Queen Mother when he got uh, caught in traffic after the third last so I think Champ is a worthy danger I'd have a question mark about absolute hard and the strength of the form of the Leopardstown win and I think Santini's run last year on good ground um, better suited be suited better by a faster pace I think he's a good each way shout just before I move on to Declan, I just I read an analogy, Barry, this morning in the trade paper saying that what Champ did last time was a little bit like Mo Farah having a run over 200 metres before the mar and I'd, marathon. I'd say it's a little bit more like a half marathon before a marathon, but it's very unusual, isn't it? It was unusual, but you could see the sense in it. Nicky didn't want to give him a hard race on his first run back um, over three miles just with the timing and um, so it was a great call it was a brave call because it was going to test the jumping but he jumped brilliantly much better than he did last year so I thought he came through that in plain colours. So many scenarios here Declan what story do you want to be reading about tomorrow? Um, well I don't really care about stories it's really the horses uh, that I back that matters most to me to be honest <laughs> but um, look I agree with Barry I think Album Photo is, is going to take a fair bit of stop and I think he's got three big things in big things in his favour. Um, one, you know, while it isn't a great goal cup in terms of figures that he's won before, I think his form is still the strongest on offer. Um, two, I thought in his two goal cup wins, he's won off different pace scenarios and in dif on, on different ground. So, um, you know, he's, he's versatile as well and he's got that proven stamina. So, yeah, it's all about Album Photo for me. OK, Album for you. Let's talk about our next subject then, Ellie May. This is today's banker or blowout. It's the inaugural running of this mare's chase. Same course and distance as the Ryanair, of course. Barry Willie Mullins has dominated so many of these mare's races and this could be no different. So for you, Ellie May, banker or blowout? No, I think she's banker. I think she's going to be hard to beat. She was very good behind Alaho and Turles, and obviously that form was well franked. Um, and she was really good at Nace and Chatter Love and seconds. Um, I don't see why that form should be reversed. But one of interest that she's top rated, getting all the allowances, has some great form, loves good ground, magic of life. She's there at a fancy price, and I think she's well worth it each way. What a wonderful mare she is. Declan, we saw yesterday, though, there is no such thing as a, a true banker. So is Ellie May your, most, your idea of the most likely winner? Yeah, of course she is. I think the market suggests that. Um, I thought even before what Alaho did yesterday, she looked banker material. I think she's going to love getting back on some nicer ground and also stepping back up in trip. Uh, she's had a very good season so far as a likeable mare and is trained by the right man in, in Willie Mullen. So, yeah, I think she's banker material today. I think you're both wrong. I think Cole Reavy <laughs> will win. I think Willie will win the race, but I'm hoping he wins it with that mare. So we'll see, won't we, at the end of the day, if, uh, if, if we're right or not. Really looking forward to that. Now time for the tricky business of the handicaps and the handicap hot shots from these two. Today's handicaps, the County Hurdle and the Martin Pipe Conditional Jockey's Handicap handicap hurdle two notoriously difficult races to predict let's try and find you a winner first of all then Declan what wins what's your big handicap fancy today today's big handicap fancy is going to be third time lucky in the county hurdle uh, he was fourth in the champion bumper last year and really impressed me at Kempton and I don't think that track really played to his strengths the new course at Cheltenham will play to his strengths much better and, you know, the Skeletons have won, I think, three of the last five renewals of this. So uh, the Skeletons had a bit of a bad day yesterday. I think they deserve a winner. They've had their team in good order all season. So maybe they can bag one here. Yeah, they do deserve a winner. I agree with that. But Barry, what's your handicap hot shot? Uh, I like Champagne Gold in the County Hurdle. It was a good run last time he was second in Leps and a big handicap um, after a break. I think he's a big chance. I also like Cad Boy in that. And in the Martin Pipe Top Falcano, and one at a fancy price each way, Dream Berry, I think, runs well after uh, a break. OK, well, I've got one in that final race of the week as well. I'm going with Galapin Deschamps for Willie Mullins. An official rating of 142. I think he might just be ahead of his mark. And if he is, hopefully he'll run a massive race. He was um, 100 to 1 when he was behind Appreciate It last time out. But then when I ran in the marathon, I was behind Mo Farah. Let's move on to the top jockey title then. And the current standings are Rachel Blackmore, 5. You've got Jack Kennedy, who's on 3. Wrong books of ride for both. But, Barry, I don't want to open up old wounds, but I probably am going to anyway. This time last year, you started Friday on how many winners? I started Friday on four winners, no seconds. Um, I rode one winner and Paul Townend rode a treble and beat me then with seconds. 
we both had five winners each and he had three or four seconds. So I think it's going to be very tricky this year. Rachel needs a winner today. Um, Paul Townend has three favourites in um, Statler, Album Photo and Billaway. So if those three come in like he did last year, he has five seconds. So he wins on the countback. Oh. Jack Kennedy has a good chance as well. Obviously, Zanny Hart gets him one closer, but I think he'll struggle to add to that. So Rachel ideally needs a score on the board and, and uh, Paul not to write a treble. Oh, it really ain't over till it's over, is it? Rachel Declan was apparently 14 to 1 to be leading rider at the start of this week, showing us all what a phenomenal rider she is, if we didn't know already. Can she do it again? And credit where credit's due, because you discovered her, Declan. <laughs> I wouldn't say I discovered her, <laughs> but uh, I remember watching her um, about three or four years ago, and she, she seemed to be improving, and she was from the same neck of the woods as I am in Tipperary, and I said I'd chance my arm and ask her for an interview, and um, she said yes, so I think we were both doing each other a favour at that stage. Uh, whether I could afford to get her now is another matter, but um, look, uh, she's as short as one to six this morning, so she's obviously going to take a lot of beating. Um, the, the triumph is going to set the tone for the race because Jack Kennedy rides Zanny here and Rachel rides Quilixios. So, look, it's not over till it's over. But, uh, and Jack has more second places than Rachel as well. So, uh, at one to six, you'll be disappointed if she's beaten. I hope she does it because it'll be another fantastic chapter in her incredible uh, short career. Um, so, yeah, let's see how it goes out. But as Barry found out last year, it's not over till the fat lady sings. No, that's very true. And, of course, what a week that would cap for her, you know, to win a champion hurdle and to win a potentially a gold cup today would be awesome for her. And all those grade ones as well, it's been quite phenomenal. But what you're waiting for is our team, Trixie. I can tell that we've got to find some winners now, Barry. So I'm going to put you on the spot first. What's your main selection on the final day of the festival today? I want that. Zana here is the one that I'm going with this today. So you're pretty confident you've sat on the horse and you think he's going to win the triumph, <sighs> even though it's a very high-class renewal. Yeah, I've loved him all season. Um, I think he's the right type. He does. He relaxes well. He stays well. He jumps well. I just say, I think he's a gorgeous horse. OK, over to you then, Declan. Yeah, I'm going to put up Fakira in the Albert Bartlett. You know, he's got some of the best form on offer there. Uh, his run behind Gallard de Menil, I thought, was franked in the, uh, the Ballymore earlier in the week. But that day at the Dublin Racing Festival, he had an awful, awful, awful trip. I think with a cleaner run round this today, he can go close. And another thing that I think I can't wait to see him on is on better ground. The way he moves, I think, is really going to, he's going to be really suited to this better ground. Well, listen, let's hope that we all go out on a high. So good luck with those two. I'm going to go with Cole Reavy in that mare's chase. I think she's a gorgeous big mare. I know she has a, a penalty to give away to her rivals, courtesy of a grade one win a couple of starts back. But I just think she's got so much scope and ability. And I hope the lesser obvious one from the Willie Mullin stable can do it for our team at Trixie. So let's confirm those three selections for you. Barry Gonzana year in the triumph, so could get us off and running in the first race of the afternoon. For Kira, then for Declan, somewhere in the region of five to one, and Colreevy for me at around seven to two. That would end the meeting very nicely. So thank you very much for all of your assistance this week, Barry. What have you most enjoyed? Oh, I don't know where to start or where to finish. It's been an amazing week's race and, and just looking forward to today. It's been brilliant. Yeah, and Declan, your most memorable tip so far this week? Oh, memorable tip. Well, it certainly wasn't Paisley Park anyway. Um, not sure. I was ha I was very happy with Chantry House yesterday. I thought he, with it, even without Envoy Allen, I thought he proved he was a different class to that field and I was hoping he would do that. So maybe Chantry House. Yeah, we gave him a positive mention yesterday. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Enjoy the final day. Enjoy the rest of the, uh, the week here at Cheltenham. Thank you for watching Festival 5 and I wish you the very best of luck.